Hi everyone, as requested, I'm going to review a video called Why Did Our Brain Shrink? These two skulls are noticeably different in size. On the left is a skull called Oase II from what is now Romania. They are believed to be a male, lived about 40,000 years ago, and had a cranial capacity. Believed to be. There's so many beliefs when it comes to science nowadays. A lot of people actually see the science when in reality it's absolutely religious beliefs. And the way that they determine how old the skull is, is laughable. In reality, they have no idea how old it is. They have between 1525 to 1600 cc cubic centimeters. The other is the skull of a modern European male, the average modern capacity being 1411 cubic centimeters, plus or minus 113. This is measuring the volume of the skull, so it takes into account the thickness of bone. We can't blame that. The smallest estimate of the Oase II skull would place them amongst the biggest brains of today. For some reason, it seems that since the end of the Ice Age, about at least 30,000 years ago, our brains have shrunk, which is an extremely curious and fascinating example of modern, recent evolution. This is so odd because the general theme of human evolution over the past three million years has been a gradual increase. All of these are religious beliefs. We have no idea how long human beings have been around, how they used to look like. A lot of times they find some parts of a skull, for example, and then they create the rest of it. That's what they did with dinosaurs. They found some kind of bone and then created the rest of it. The way a child would do it, they simply imagined how they may have looked like. They could have been a bone from an elephant, but they imagined that it may be from a dinosaur. I'm sure that most people know that there are no dinosaurs in museums, right? I hope so. They imagine how dinosaurs may have looked like. They imagine that dinosaurs may have existed. No actual dinosaur bones as such large dinosaurs have ever been found. But then again, people are pretty ignorant. Maybe there's a few out there who have no idea about this. It's in brain size. On average, gaining about 70 cubic centimeters every 100,000 years. Apart from a couple notable exceptions, of course. Shout out to Homo floresiensis. We have, of course, no idea how old these bones are. Nobody can verify it. We can religiously believe other human beings who put out this information that this is true. Of course, it could be completely fake. But I, of course, agree that human brains have shrunk. And there's a very good reason for it. I'm not gonna say it yet because I want to watch more of the video. Maybe the creator of the video is going to talk about it. Of course, you will always find bigger and smaller skulls. Humans are supposed to have a natural skull size, which is possible to degenerate. And right now, we are the most degenerated human beings in history. Yet recently, our brains began to shrink. Similarly to the male skulls I just showed, in the past 10,000 years, the skulls of European women decreased from an average of 1,502 cc's to 1,241 cc's. A decrease of 240 cubic centimeters. That's basically a lemon's worth of brain just gone. You wouldn't want to lose a lemon's worth of brain right now. You would consider that an absolute disaster. This hasn't just affected European populations. It's been observed in China, Southern Africa, Australian Aboriginals, other regions as well. Huge geographic spread, a diverse cross-section of humanity. Though whether it is, Truly, a global phenomenon is still up for debate. Bizarrely. Yes, it's absolutely debatable because on one hand, you say that it happened basically everywhere on Earth, even in Africa. And then on the other hand, you say that it's debatable. Of course it is because in places such as Siberia, people still eat raw meat. They still live naturally. Why would their brains shrink? Maybe slightly because you can't live absolutely naturally anymore. But uh, in comparison to, let's say, 10,000 years ago, why would there be any change? This decrease in size has occurred at the same time that human civilization achieved its greatest artistic... Greatest artistic... I don't know about that. Scientific... Scientifically, absolutely not. All of this garbage came out in the last 50 years. Us using iPads, iPhones, and so on only proves that we are slaves. No humans have ever been as enslaved as we are now. And it's only going to get way worse. This is all a horrible sign. <laughs> it only shows and proves how dumb we are. And cultural achievement. Cultural achievements. And then he shows McDonald's. I don't know, even know if this video is a joke at this point. There's no obvious sign of a cognitive decline at all. The exact. <laughs> are you joking? You just showed McDonald's when you talked about cultural achievements, man. Let me give you a few reasons why we are by far the dumbest humans in history. We actually eat seeds and see them as food. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> it cannot get much worse than that. 
<laughs> Actually, people nowadays eat fake meat instead of real meat. But okay, enough about the food for now. People exercise, which no human being on earth has ever been recorded to do. People nowadays protect themselves against reproduction instead of reproducing themselves, which is what every human, every animal in nature does. We are the worst. <laughs> Come on, our brains are completely damaged. Opposite, in fact. So what's going on here? How do anthropologists explain this phenomenon? Well, to be clear, no one knows why it's happened. <laughs> but there are some ideas. Today I'm going to discuss three hypotheses. The last one has... Three. The second one is probably, hopefully, food, grain, seeds. Uh, we'll see. Having extremely interesting implications for the future of humanity. The first hypothesis is quite a contentious idea. Human self-domestication, also phrased as selection against reactive aggression. By reactive aggression, anthropologists mean in-group fighting, lashing out at those around you. Definitely not intergroup fighting, which we still sadly excel at. Domesticated animals exhibit much less aggression than their wild counterparts. Naturally, this was a trait that early farmers selected for. Early farmers designed. Yes, and that's also because they don't have to worry about predators as much. Of course, some sheep may still be eaten by wolves, but usually they are in a safe space. Right. An animal has to be willing to live alongside you to be handled by you. If you're constantly having to fight it, it's not going to make for an easy life for the farmer. When people in the Upper Paleolithic and the Neolithic selected animals based on this increased sociability and reduced aggression, certain physical changes also appeared in their bodies. Reduced size, shortening of the face, including a reduction in teeth size, reduced sex. All of this only has to do with food. It's all biological, biochemical. I hope that he's going to talk about it. It's because of a lack of vitamins A, D, with a combination of minerals. That's how you form your bones. If especially a baby, a young child doesn't get enough of these vitamins and minerals, then they will not develop as well. And uh, if they have children, then the next generation is going to be even worse and so on. That's what happened to us ever since we started cultivating uh, foods, grains, farming and all of that garbage. Reduced size, short face, small teeth, absolutely only food related. Actual dimorphism, males and females are more similar in size and appearance. Importantly for this video, reduced cranial capacity, smaller brains. These changes are called domestication syndrome, and there are lots of examples of this. The brains of dogs are approximately 29% smaller than those of wolves. Okay, uh, I think that the video is supposed to be a joke because he's comparing a wolf to a small dog, a completely different kind of almost species, seeing as they come from different kind of animals. I hope that it's a joke. Pig brains are 34% smaller than the brain. Yes, which makes sense because pigs eat a lot of garbage when you farm them, whereas a wild pig eats the natural food the pig is supposed to. Pigs eat all kinds of insects, small animals, tubers they can dig up, anything they can find essentially, but what is found in nature, they choose what to eat still, whereas the farmed animals never choose what they want to eat. And when you have brainwashed humans who feed them garbage, then they can't protect themselves against degenerating, they will have to become smaller. Brains of wild pigs, cow brains are 25% smaller than auroch brains, and this decrease in brain size does seem to go hand in hand with reduced aggression. Again, it depends on what kind of cows you have measured. If you measure the ones who eat mostly grains, then it's no surprise. If you measure a grass-fed cow who has simply been moved to a farm from the wild, then you're not going to see a difference. This distinction has to be made. Cows bred for bullfighting, who have very little contact with humans until their debut fight, and are bred for aggression, not other attributes like milk production, have the largest brains of all in a study of 71 different cattle breeds. So amongst cattle, more human contact, more sociability seems to result in smaller brains, less contact, more aggression equals bigger brain. I'm not saying that it has no impact whatsoever, but your actual brain size is not going to be impacted almost at all because of human contact and all of this garbage, come on. <laughs> of course it's food. Now these features might not manifest uniformly across all species, and there are of course other changes that happen to domesticated animals, like more variation in fur color and increased lactation, etc, etc. But there's lots of evidence. Increased lactation is only because of the drugs that the animals get, come on man. Get some kind of information before making a video, seriously. For these four changes occurring, and arguably 
These are the changes that have also occurred in Homo sapiens compared to other archaic humans. Look at our skull compared to Neanderthals. Our faces have moved further below the skull, our brow ridges have almost disappeared, our teeth are smaller, our jaws are thinner, we developed a chin. That's if you believe in the belief of evolution that we used to look that way and that we evolved. It depends on what kind of religion you follow. I don't follow the religion of evolution, which is why this doesn't really mean anything to me. I still agree that our brains for sure did shrink. They must have because of how we eat. And arguably, our brains are slightly smaller. These are extremely similar to the differences between dogs and wolves. Judging from the Jebel Ehud skull, the earliest archaic Homo sapiens we have found so far, our faces had moved further below the brain case 300,000 years ago, suggesting this process had already began at the very beginnings of our specific lineage. Yet this reduction in brain size has only occurred since the end of the Ice Age, maybe even more recently than that, foreshadowing. So that's a bit of a head-scratcher. The second major issue is that we have no great way to explain this mechanism. These changes probably occur in domesticated animals because the farmer has removed many selective pressures that are found in nature. The pressure for large males to compete against each other for reproductive success, gone. The farmer decides who mates. The pressure for animals to be large. For sure I agree that all of this also makes a difference. Large, fast, agile, in order to better fend off predators, gone. Farmer and his dogs will protect you. When we're talking about humans, what was driving this change? We don't have farmers deciding who we do and don't boink. Although you could do. I'm not here to king shame anyone. If you do, that's totally fine. It's just not typical. We absolutely have that. The government has absolute control over that. Completely. What are you talking about? Maybe the bow and arrow literally altered our evolution. Perhaps more cooperative breeding and the raising of children, living in tighter communities, selected against aggression. But why did this only affect us? Other archaic humans almost certainly raised children collectively food sharing and things like this almost has to take place in any human society because our calorie requirements are so great. And then also, why did this only affect Homo sapiens after the Ice Age? We were certainly raising children collectively long before that. Maybe the development of language allowed people to scheme and team up on the bullies in their communities. Again, entirely possible. But testing when language developed in the archaeological record is extremely difficult. It almost certainly occurred before the Ice Age. And archaic humans again probably have- I love how this guy talks about something like the Ice Age, which is impossible to prove, as if it just happened. Oh yeah, the Ice Age. I'm just gonna talk about this religious belief, just like a Christian talks about Jesus, as if it's the absolute truth, as if it just happened. Oh yeah, the Ice Age, blah, 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 the Fire Age, the this age, this age, oh yeah, it just happened. Oh yeah, oh, you don't believe me? Well, then you're not part of my religion. You didn't read the same man-made beliefs from a man-made book that I read, which means that you don't know the truth. The same way a Christian would say, you don't know the truth because you didn't read the Bible. You don't know the truth about Jesus, our God, Lord and Savior, which is actually <laughs> the Son, but whatever. <laughs> it's just the same thing. It's so incredibly religious, this whole talk. Hypothesis number two. We've just generally gotten smaller. Humans have genuinely decreased in size slightly in the last 50,000 years, 30,000 years. A couple of factors might explain this. First, after the Ice Age, a shift away from hunting huge animals like mammoths and woolly rhinos into a more broad spectrum economy, hunting smaller animals, eating a diverse array of plant food. There's still a lot of large animals around. Not as many, unfortunately, but that's because the government has control over what we hunt. Not that long ago, people still used to hunt elephants in Africa. Foods, using technologies like bows and arrows and nets that don't require us to get in close and stab a rhino. These just may have resulted in us needing to be less physically big than our Ice Age ancestors. Why would you need to be more physically big to hunt those big animals? That makes zero sense. You hunt animals in a group and uh, you throw spears or whatever sharp objects that you can find or create. Rocks and whatnot, that's how you hunt as humans. We were never big in comparison to a gorilla, any apes, or whatever animals. <laughs> Stupid. Secondly, later, a shift to an agricultural diet. Around 12,000 years ago. Exactly, and that really has to be the main reason for sure. You know, possibly the most significant change in all of human history occurred. For 1,000 years prior, the Earth had suddenly plunged back into temperatures of the last glacial maximum. However, 12,000 years ago, the climate warmed and more importantly, became a lot more stable. This new climate allowed humans to experiment generation after generation with the same plants, same animals. And in the next few thousand years, agricultural communities sprang up all around the world. The population grew massively, trade specializations developed. It's really the foundation of our modern world, truly. But life wasn't easy for these farmers. Crops fail, animals die, their diet may have been lacking certain key nutrients, and we seem to have... 
Okay, let's see it written during the Venice farming, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't say anything about nutrients. I thought that there will be something specific. Nutritional deficiencies of diets based on plant carbohydrates created challenges to normal growth and development. Oh, very nice. I'm very glad to read that. Assessment of health based on growth and development. Yeah, exactly. When you don't get the vitamins and minerals, which I mentioned before, then you're not going to be able to properly develop and grow. That's what you need to get as a baby. That's why before modern slavery, humans always used to feed their babies liver as their first food, whereas nowadays, sometimes they don't even get breast milk. And if they do get food, they get vegetable puree, which has no vitamins or minerals really at all. Actually, that garbage only has toxins, essentially. That's why we are doomed. A lot of evidence of malnutrition in these early farming communities. Probably as a result of this malnutrition, our bodies did get smaller. And if our bodies are smaller, our brains are smaller too. Our brains are by far the most expensive. And this has to be the main reason. It just has to be because that actually affects us biologically. The organ in our body consuming 20% of our calories, despite the fact that they only account for 2% of our body mass. So if you're living in an environment of nutritional stress, there's probably some advantage to having a smaller brain to requiring less calories. And obviously, Less calories in your diet means less calories are going to your brain anyway. It's estimated that in the last 10,000 years, we lost about five kilograms of body mass. The relationship between brain size and body size is very well understood. So how much brain- Absolutely, if your brain is smaller, then your skull is smaller. If your skull is smaller, then your whole body is probably smaller. I am uh, above average in height and my skull is uh, very big. I really have uh, trouble finding hats that fit me because uh, most of the hats nowadays are created for people with small skulls, which is why I am abnormal in that sense, which is actually more natural. So to summarize hypothesis number two, just general body size reduction, it definitely happened. And of course that is going to affect our brain size, but our brains have shrunk much more than is expected. Starting roughly 10 million years ago with the Miocene hominins through to the Australopiths at around 3 million years ago, there was a slow and steady increase in noggin capacity. Then around 2.1 million years ago, they spotted the first huge spike in brain growth. This coincides with the evolution of Homo erectus and probably technological and social developments, better hunting strategies, more efficient digestion of food through cooking, more social complexity, things like that. This rapid brain growth can- Again, I love how he just shares his religious beliefs as if it's just true. Oh yeah, 2 million years ago, we have no idea if humans even were around then, but let's just say 2 million years with no proof, no reasoning, just nothing, no arguments. <laughs> I just love it. It's just scientism. Continued until around 1.49 million years ago. From this point on growth. It's just a man-made chart with no proof whatsoever. Yeah, let's just go 100,000 years up. Oh, how do we know this? We don't know that. It's just a religious belief. Jesus has more proof than this, but let's just draw it. It's just a child's drawing with no proof whatsoever. It's just so ridiculous. Slowed, but there was still a steady increase in brain size all through the Pleistocene, not decreasing until around 3,000 years ago. That's extremely recent. That's super recent. Talk about modern human evolution, 3,000 years, at least from the skulls selected. Whether it's true or not, I could absolutely agree that because of the food, it started happening um, around whatever, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. The food got worse and worse, and in the last 100 years, <laughs> it's the worst it's ever been. We eat absolute garbage. It's just never been as bad as now. In the study, and remember any study is only as good as the material provided for it, this decline is 50 times faster than the preceding brain growth of the last 3 million years. Incredible. What to make of this? Decreasing brain size without any evidence of a declining cognitive ability does suggest that there is perhaps some... How could you possibly say that when we have the dumbest slaves on earth living among us nowadays, absolute NPCs everywhere who can't see through any of the lies from the government, from the media? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Seriously. I have no idea how you are watching this video right now. Absolutely none. But that doesn't stop me from taking advantage of that technology just so long as someone else knows how to use it. We've externalized information hugely. I don't trust this technology whatsoever, and I would not want to be using it. I would much rather live in nature if it was possible. Any one of these hypotheses could be right or wrong. It's entirely possible that they have all played a part in the evolution of our brain. The one about food can be wrong biologically because when you eat foods which don't have certain micronutrients, 
which promote growth, then you will, of course, shrink. Your whole body will shrink, which also includes your skull and your brain. That's common sense. There's no real proof needed for it really be understand it naturally also. The worse you eat, the worse you will look like. If social complexity and externalization of information and collective decision making has reduced the size of our brains in the last 3000 years, then what will happen in the next 3000 years? Now collective decision making, that's just human nature. We work in groups. What are you talking about? That our ability to externalize information and communicate the video was not so bad overall it's just that he was sharing these religious beliefs in between without giving any arguments or proof no reasoning as to why it is so he just said that two million years ago it was like this how should we know that we can't we can only believe that and in this case we can only believe it religiously seeing as we need to read a religious text and then uh, choose if we believe it or not, same as it is with Jesus, as I said. Then he also talked about the Ice Age, which uh, we have no idea about. We don't know if that ever happened or not. We cannot know that. We can only believe these beliefs. You can only believe a belief. You cannot know a belief. You can only know what you sense as a human being, and those are facts. You can go out and sense when the sky is blue or when it's raining and then it's a fact that the sky is blue or that it's raining if you go and write a book about how the weather was that day then it becomes a belief to the human being who is reading it if we read something about some ice age or what happened two million years ago even though there may have been no human beings two million years ago then it's an insanely religious belief it's just complete Religion is the definition of it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.